So where is it in your EZ68K? Your EZ68K says Okay, let me Now from this easy 68 k where does it the step pointer? This is your data register. This is your address register. This is your status register. This is your problem counter. So the last one is your step pointer is this one. This is your step pointer. It's pointing to 100 or 1 million, right? Not 1 million, this is in hex. Why does it point over there? Why? Why? Go back to the basics of memory. Basics of memory, eh? When I draw my memory, it will start from 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 right? And the last one is FFF, FFF, F, F, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, that stack pointer is pointing to a value. So, where is the value? is pointing to this value after f f f f f f the next location address is equivalent to dollar sign 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 my default stack pointer is pointing to this location i'm pointing to this so no matter what, means that if you want to save any data or any written addresses, it will save at this locations, stacking it from here and go up. So I repeat that. Eh? I repeat that. Eh? So every time, if you want to save a value using stack pointing, it will start to save accordingly from this point area starting from the last one and then it's going to be up stacking then you are doing means that you are going to put data from here then data here data here data here finish so you are having this one this is the last one this is dollar sign f f f f f f f c this is the location you have to learn this one. Eh? So this is a pointing. You must point at the address. So it means that from your memory, from your memory, the last one is reserved for stack. This is the area of stack. This is your stack. The pointing to the address they call it pointer. This is a pointer. Okay, now open up the code that I give to you, Stack Pointer Basics. Stack Pointer Basics. This is inside your slides exercise. Open up your Stack Pointer Basics. Let's look at the results. So if you want to use the stack pointing instructions, you must know that this is a command. Dash bracket sp means you are putting the value to the stack area. Plus bracket sp, you are reading back the value from this stack area. Means that you are putting and read. Okay, let's try one by one. Eh? 
Origin 1000, move the along this value to D0. Move the along this value to D2. Now this is a command for me to put the value to the stack and then re take it back, replace the value. This code is only to replace two data register like swapping. Last time we can use swap, but this one I'm using a stack to do the swapping. So now run it one by one. Okay, look carefully at eh? it. Okay, the first two commands are very simple. This is very common to move something to data registers. So the first one is move.log. Move.log this value to D0. Your D0 now have the contents of this value. Okay, so far? Then the next one. Your step pointer still pointing to the value that will change yet. Now your second command is put to D2. So you have this D2 and D1 which is this one. Betul eh? Now the command for the step pointer, you have to look over here. You have to look over here eh? Look over here. Okay. D0. D0, the value will be put to the stack. This is a command, negative, stack pointer. The value for D0, this one, will be pushed to the stack area. Will be pushed to here. So I'm going to assume that this value will be changed to the area, to the stack. So it means that you put another one. Two things that you need to view. The first one is the stack pointer. Another one, look at the memory here. So open up the memory. Go to F, 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 F. That is the last location. This is the last location, eh? F, 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 F. This is the last location, F, F. Okay, this is a stack area. Stack area. So I'm going to run my code once. So put over here, put over here. Now look at this area. Look at this stack pointer. I'm going to run move.log d0 to this stack pointer. They're changing. So I'm putting the data now to my stack which is this data 1 1 2 2 3 3 4 4 so what does it mean now your stack pointer now go to f f f f f c why Okay, I'm going to look again, again 
on the FFF area and this one. Okay, look at here. Look at the step pointer here. Eh? Step pointer, top step, step pointer and this area. W means only 4 digits, so not long and long is 8 digits just now. So now run this one. D0 dot W only go to the stack area only four digits will be seen over there three three four four because of the word size here I'm going to put only three three four four and your stack pointer is only minus two it's pointing to the highest value for your area of the memory stack. Kalau W, you have to minus F, 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 minus 2. Kalau long word, you have to minus 4. Which, which is mean that you are putting the data, now you are putting the data from top, from the bottom to top, and the final one pointer is this one. Which is my stack pointer, is this one, F, 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 E. It's pointing to that area. Faham tak faham? So, 
What does it mean? Uh? What does it mean? I want to tell you over here. If you want to do push and pop, it will look at the pointer and press. So right now, for example, let's let's push two times. Where you can put like this. The command, the command you can add up the last one. Okay, this one you do two times. Now you are going to pop. Push, sorry, push two times. Okay, try. Okay, push two times. Eh? Or uh, to make the time easier, let's try first. Now look at the area of the hexa stack. Locations of your values of the 
register that you have, the data. Can you understand? This pointer is pointer. Stack is the area. So you can play around all these ones. You can push anything, but you will not erase. You will always keep on pushing the data up to the level. You just cannot replace anything. That's why they call it like this. That's not in the slides. In the slides, In this slide, you can see that if you want to push any data, it will push like this. And if you want to pull out the data, it will be based on the LIFO. Last in, first out. LIFO, L-I-F-O. LIFO, last in, first out. So this is the first in, first in. You cannot take this one. If you want to take this one, you have to take out everything first and then you can read the, the other one, the last one. So this is last in, first out. Sorry? This one again, okay, let's say for example So you have three data to be saved to the stack So first time, you are putting the data to the stack So I'm going to put here, so my pointer will be up, right up Okay, I push another one Another one Push another one, go up again Now I want to read the last one you cannot just simply write the last one, you have to take out the last first two. You have to read this one first, they go down, read the second one first, and the last one you can read this one. That's why they call it last in, first out. So whatever the last in will go out first. You cannot simply take the first one. Last in, first out. So it means that you are stacking it, macam pinggang mangku eh, your plates. Your plates at home, you are stacking it up, you cannot just simply take the last one. You are going to take out the first one, first one, until you can get the last one. That is the last in, first out. You are putting it first, and the last one will go out first. You tak boleh tarik bawah terus. You cannot take it out because it's wrong. So you have the stack area, you have the stack pointer. Pointer is the address. Okay, ma? Tak lah. Okay, this is the comment just now I tell you, negative or plus. So plus is pop, negative is push. Okay, so next one, which is the last one. Just now the example is to save any data from data register, right? The last one is to save the written address. Written address. So like for last time, this is your uh, command for the LED test. This is remember this one. If you can remember this, this is jump to subroutine. And if you will go down here, when you jump, when you jump anywhere in your program, you will reserve the last address. So means that it can return back to the particular area after it finished its subroutine. So what I'm going to do? I run this one right now. Look at your stack pointer here. Look at the value here. Look at the value at the memory stack area and your code. Now I run this one. Move the pipe. Turn on my LED. Jump to subroutine. Jump to subroutine. Go to delay. It will jump here. So your stack area will reserve 
and will save the written address for this command. So I'm going to run this one. You look here. I run this one. I run to jump to subroutine. I jump to this routine. So automatically, my stack will be saving the written address, which is 100E in the long word. 100E is over here, which is after the jump subroutine command. What does it mean? Eh? I have to finish this one. I have to finish this one. Now, return to subroutine. This command will check your stack area and find the address to go back, which is this one. So, return to subroutine will take this value, and this is know that this is going to be put at the problem counter, and it will go here. This one is equivalent to this one. Program counter is for your program to work on. So means that if you are using the jump subroutine command, it will reserve the written address in your stack for you to go that after the written subroutine, it will read this one and it will put to the program counter and you can run back to here. Is the process of saving the written address. Understand? Or do you understand? No. Uh, uh, let me repeat last one, eh? I repeat two times. Eh? Just now we are putting it as the data, right? Very simple, eh? Stack. Just now we put in the data over there. Now the second function for the stack is to reserve the written address. They call it written address. Written address means that is the address for you to run again. In this example, you are using a subroutine over here means that your program is jumping here and there. Okay? When you use jump to subroutine, it jumps. It jumps out from the main program. Before it jumps, it must have the last location to come back. They call it a written address. So for example here, after this jump to subroutine, the next address must be here, correct? Right? The next address must be here. But because of the jump, we have to jump first. And when you jump, you have to keep this address, the written value address. So the computer, the microprocessor, will save this value to your stack area. So after this one all finished and it finds the return to subroutine syntax, this syntax will go back to your stack area, takes this whole thing put at the program counter, means that you can go back here. Return address means the address where your machine code have to go back. So that's why if you run this one one by one, you know that you always like this. Now it's jump to subroutine, the other one. It's changed to 101C. Means that after this jump to subroutine, it will jump over here. By right after that, you must come back here. So the location is 101C. So after this one finish, it will return to subroutine. It will check this one, take this one, go over here, and it can go over here back. So return address is the final address before it jumps. For make sure that it does not lost. Your program can go back up and down. So you can see that if you keep on running this program, you can see that your stack area will be changed. That will be changed again. Every time, subroutines, You can see that every time before, after the jump to subroutine, the stack will be reserved and save the written address.